Oh, cat looks ominous. This spot wouldn't make my mom happy. Oh boy. Yep, left just in time. It is 6.50. Sun just came up. I wanted to get into the park before sunrise today, but that's obviously not gonna happen. After a severe miscalculation in how long it would take me to get into the actual park, and also observing the less than favorable sky conditions, I figured I'd make my way to the most iconic view of Yosemite Valley, Tunnel View. I was tipped off by one of the guys yesterday that there's a little trail back here behind the dumpsters to get up to a spot that's just a little away from people. There's a ho 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 ho, okay, hold on. Yikes, that's cool. Definitely wanna be careful up here though. <sighs> I'm just so sick of hiking up to places for views, but they turn out to be worth it. So that's what we gotta do. And actually this trail isn't bad. This is pretty, I mean, aside from the fact that if I slip, it's certain death. Uh, <laughs> just gotta be really, really, really careful. Damn, 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 that's cool. Let's see through here. This feels like someplace out of Lord of the Rings. I mean, this whole place, this whole park feels a whole, okay, yep, yeah, this is it. And I gotta be really careful up here. Figured I'd roll in some pretty video of the valley while I get up on the old soapbox here for a minute. Generally speaking, I like to be friendly with new people and try to get them talking, especially when you share a hobby. You might be able to learn something, you might be able to teach something. In this case, I got a great tip about a place I would otherwise have missed completely, and it wasn't even that far out of the way, but it was just far enough to greatly improve the composition you'd get from the normal tunnel view overlook. This is something I'm trying to really focus on as a photographer now, which is to go to the places I want to see, but try to find a different perspective if I can. You may or may not hear that as a recurring theme here, so let's see if it paid off. I think it's been as good as it's gonna be for now. Uh, clouds are being kind of stubborn and it looks like the lighting on the valley is just starting to get flatter and flatter. So I'm gonna pack it up and actually head into the park and see some of the little things. I say little things, cause everything's little compared to this um, that I wanted to catch yesterday, but didn't have time cause I had to get to the firefall spot. So see you in a bit. Driving through here, the park actually felt small because the the like walls of granite that you're in between are so huge that it throws off your sense of scale for the rest of the place. Turn but left I'm, onto Yosemite Lodge Drive, then turn left. I really gotta remember to silence those before I start rolling on something. The fact that it's overcast today is actually it's not it's not turn excellent. right onto Yosemite Lodge Drive, then turn left. Got it. Thank you. Um, it's not excellent, but it's also not horrible because now this means that the light through the middle of the day is going to not be as harsh. So um, hopefully we walk away with some pretty cool stuff still. Um, cool. I was trying to find a unique view of Yosemite Falls, but unfortunately between the weather, the snow, and the people, I just didn't feel like one could be had. So I came back to the first viewing area and rolled on some video and got at least one good photo, which I'll show you now. So a lesson that I learned for photography kind of a long time ago was to go where the people aren't. Not just to get unique views, but because usually it's kind of a waste of time to be where everyone is. Damn, it's 
sun just came through for like a split second. And that kind of doesn't matter. But mainly, if everybody's at that spot, unless you're trying to get a photo of everyone enjoying the view, which let's be real, most of us are not. It's kind of raining on me now. <laughs> oh, this is cool. Um, going to where everybody's at does not pay off. Speaking of paying off, I hope that this little trek through this misty shit here is going to pay off. This is why I don't go where the people are. Just a gorgeous view of Half Dome with all the trees below. And I might stay here and enjoy a little snack. This is good. Very profound, I know. At this point, I was just taking everything in without worrying about my camera for a minute. Like I mentioned in the first video, you have to take some time to just look at these things and let them soak into your memory. I did try to make a photo out of this view, but I just wasn't very moved by my results. And that's just kind of how it is sometimes. You get somewhere that looks awesome in person, but when you try to translate it to a camera, it just doesn't pan out. It might have been the sky, the shapes, or maybe because I had just left the best view Yosemite has to offer, but it just felt a little lacking. I even tried it as a black and white trying to get some of that Ansel Adams feel, but it just never really felt right to me. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, the forecast started to show that the snow was making its way through, so I headed back over to Tunnel View to see what it would look like with some weather rolling in. Now I gotta say too, El Cap, this is one giant, and I do mean giant, slab of granite. It's something that you see with your eyes, but you also somehow feel it when you're there. It just towers over you like this earthen behemoth and makes you viscerally aware of just how small you really are. It's quite the perspective. Anyway, enough of the existentialism. Let's see how Tunnel View panned out. This spot wouldn't make my mom happy. It looks really cool. And I am safe. I'm kind of tucked in by a rock here. It's only like windy up top by me, but I've got everything kind of in a spot where I'm not going anywhere. All right, I had my hard line on when to call it, and it was when it starts sleeting. And that is now. Oh, cap looks ominous. Getting home is the primary objective right now. Everybody's clearing out, wisely so. Sun just started poking, oh man, that's gonna hit El Cap, I know it. That's all right, it wasn't worth it. Right? Right? Okay, this was crazy. All the photographers that were up here started packing up to leave before the weather got really bad, when out of nowhere, a couple holes in the clouds opened up and sent down these giant beams of light straight onto El Cap. Suddenly, everybody was scrambling to get set up again and try to capture this incredible moment before it left. Despite it being really hard, here's some of my best attempts. Just kidding, I'm back. Let's just wait and see what happens. It seemed like nature was giving me a second chance to get a cool time lapse of the clouds rolling through the valley, so I rushed back to my spot, set up my GoPro, and started rolling. Here's what I got. Oh my god. That was some sick footage and it cleared out weather-wise um, it just got kind of cold but it would turn from like a blustery wind to more of a breeze which was much more manageable i am cold hungry i could use a shower and just chill for the night after settling back in at the lodge, I took some time to reflect on the day. I started thinking about the fluid nature of goals and how important to me it is to remember that. Yesterday I had a goal to take a photo of a specific thing, at a specific time, in a specific place. 
Today my goal kind of evolved as the opportunities presented themselves, and I think that's incredibly important as a photographer to keep in mind. It's easy to get caught up in doubt and that feeling of, what am I even doing here? Not just with a photo, but with life in general. But the answer is always the same. You're making the best of the situation you have. That's all we can do sometimes in life, and in times where we aren't sure what the end goal even is, it's important to remember that it's still okay to be at the beginning, and wherever it is, you'll get there. Mm -hmm.